The next type of robot or parallel robot that we'll look at is the three RPR. So this is basically comes in two dimensions and three dimensions. Three dimensions is a hexapod, but the two dimensional version is a tripod. So it's got an actuator here, 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 and then these other revolute joints are passive. Then the hexapod robot is known as the Stewart platform. This is used in applications like telescope positioning, satellite positioning, flight and driving simulators, and it's very stable. So the end effector is this piece at the top right here. And something like this can support a lot of weight. Pneumatics are strong and the weight is gonna be distributed throughout six different legs. And so these are really sturdy. So we'll watch a video of this. This just illustrates how it's, how it's moving as you control each of the actuators. So this one is a six degree of freedom. Whereas the Delta had three degrees of freedom. Here's an explanation of the math for the three RPR robot. You can see here, the base is the large gray triangle. The end effector is this yellow triangle. And each R here is the link length. So for forward kinematics, we have to find a platform pose given each of these leg lengths. And then inverse kinematics would be finding the leg lengths for the desired pose. For the parallel robots, the inverse kinematics is easier, but we'll kind of look at both. Forward kinematics. We need to find position and orientation of the platform. The position is given by that center, and then the orientation is the angle around the z-axis. So this is x, y, Z comes out of the page, the orientation is y'all. So three degrees of freedom, we have three different actuators and X, Y, and y'all. Is this a planar robot or is there a Z component that is hidden? This is a planar robot. First we will look at this, this two-dimensional version and then we'll look at the three-dimensional with the three-dimensional one will have six legs. For forward kinematics, there's going to be two solutions. So if you know the length of each of these legs, there can be two possible solutions for the pose of the end effector. Basically, the angle down or the angle up. So you have to guide your solution numerically. Um, just the same way as you guided inverse kinematics numerically for the serial manipulators, you have to kind of do a similar thing to guide forward kinematics numerically for the parallel robot. Although typically with a parallel robot, you don't need to know the forward kinematics as badly as you need to know the inverse kinematics, because generally you want this end effector to be in a certain spot. And so then you just have to calculate what your joint lengths need to be. So we'll look at that. Inverse kinematics, if we're given the pose of the platform, we know the X and Y component and the yaw that we need it to be at. Find what each of these leg, leg lengths are. So the procedure. Find the platform corners in the platform frame. So the platform frame is going to be based at the centroid of the platform, this X, Y, Point, and then we just have to find where each of those corner points are relative to the origin of that frame. So that is PI in the centroid frame. And find the platform transformation relative to the base frame. So that's going to be, if zero is the base frame, then we need to know what's the transformation to get from here, this global XY, to here this X, Y of the platform frame. Third, find the platform corners 
in the base frame. So for that, just multiply the transformation times the point. So we've got point in the platform frame, multiply by the transformation from the base frame, and then we know where that new point is. So once we found that point, and we know where its origin is, then it's just the Euclidean distance. So square root of x squared plus y squared to get the length of that leg. So stepping through it, more details with the math. First, we find corners in the platform frame. So for that, we know RP is what I call radius of platform. So it's just the distance from the center to the corner. And that RP is going to be the same from center to P3 as it is to P1 as it is to P2. It's the same distance, although it'll be at a different angle. So to get to P1, we go from the center and then basically this pi over six comes in because that's gonna be the angle between the x-axis of the platform and the angle from, it's that point to the centroid. So that's gonna be 30 degrees because this is an equilateral triangle. We know this angle is 60 and this is, that vector is going to bisect it. So that's where the pi over six comes in. And then it's just a matter of choosing whether you use cosine and sine, is it positive or negative, to get to each of those P1, P2, P3. And then we need to find the platform transformation relative to the base frame. So for this, it's just the rotation and the origin to get the transformation. The rotation is going to be, we know, around the z-axis, because it's a yaw, and so we can just use cosine sine minus sine cosine, put that matrix in here for the rotation, and then the translation is just going to be the origins of that point. And then it's zero because the z component is zero. This is a planar robot. And the platform corners in the base frame, we just multiply. So we do this multiplication to get P1 in the zero frame. And then similarly, it's the same transformation, but it's going to be a different point each time to get each of those points in the world frame. So we go P1 to O1, P2 to O2, and P3 to O3. Then finally, find the Euclidean distance. So square root of the x squared plus the y squared plus the z squared, which the z's here are just going to be 0. But if you were doing it in three dimensions, you could also include the z components. So then we get r1, r2, r3. And knowing that those are linear actuators, then we know what position we need to command each actuator to go to to get this desired output. Next, we will look at the simulation of this. So you can see if you program those points in, it's easy to make the robot follow a specific trajectory because it's an algebraic solution here. So those same formulas work for no matter what your desired position is going to be. How is that one possible? Would the length, the, the legs not cross each other at some point? Okay, so the legs probably would. Um, okay. And let's say you had like one mounted below, one mounted above, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, so. That wasn't just the. It was a theoretical path. It, it being mounted like above or something. Like if the yellow triangle was in front of the lines, no, it still wouldn't be valid, would it? Yeah, because if you you could have maybe like one above, one below, but then there's still the third one that would have to be 
somewhere. It's a, it's a ghost. Yeah. It also looks like the robot is passing through singularities as it exits the platform. Um, yes. Okay. So that's a good point. It does look like that, but since there's only one solution, that doesn't matter because we're actually commanding the joint positions as opposed to making it figure out what those, those joint positions need to be because there was an algebraic solution for it. There was only one solution. So this is just graphs of the centroid pose versus time. So X and Y, and then the lengths of the legs. And that, that was for the last one for the smiley face. So yeah, even though the robot gets rolled low, so it seems like, oh, that's a singularity, there is only one, there is only one possible solution. So it's not gonna go out of control because it knows what solution to choose. Short platform is the hexapod robot. So this follows the same procedure as the 2D one, the three RPR, just this one is in three dimensions. So our rotation is gonna be a little more tricky to find because we need to know the roll, pitch, yaw of the platform. Multiply, since this is fixed frame rotations, we're gonna pre-multiply. So for roll, pitch, yaw, then roll goes at the end, yaw, pitch goes in front of it, and yaw goes in front of that. So this gets that R matrix. And then the points in the platform frame are actually going to be the same relative to the platform frame because they move, they're connected, they move with the platform. And then the origin is going to have a Z component. Now this one having six legs and only three connection points, then there are six vectors that we need to figure out. So we'll look at the code for this one. This one follows a somewhat more realistic path. I made it not dump the people out. And so none of the legs should really cross over each other too badly. So probably all of you have ridden in something kind of like this when you go to a space center or some other place where they charge you, you know, like 10 bucks for a two minute ride or something. But it can also be used for positioning objects that are very heavy or need to be very accurately positioned, like large telescopes, satellites, things like that. But I think flight simulators are the most frequent use of them. So here, we can look at centroid pose versus time. So orientation, roll, and then pitch was actually the same as roll for this particular one, and then yaw. So then x, y, and z all can be plotted. And then the leg length versus time, you can see they pretty much follow like a similar sinusoidal pattern 